Assalamu alaikum. I am Dr. Amisha Zahid Shah and today we are going to talk about lymphomas. It's August 2023. Uh, these will be the contents of our discussion and today we are going to talk about chronic lymphocytic leukemia slash small lymphocytic lymphoma and mental cell lymphoma. We are going to discuss them together because they are similar yet quite very different lymphomas. Uh, so we are going to discuss them side by side so that we can know their differences and we can discuss how to differentiate them from one another. And they are very important differentials for one another. So here's a little quiz. Let's spot the differences. Other than the color difference, uh, the cells look quite similar. So one of them is CLL and the other is mental cell lymphoma. Uh, these pictures are taken from Robbins and Cotton, Pathologic Bases of Diseases. So let's find out which one is which. Okay, the one on left is uh, CLL slash SLL, while the one on right is mental cell lymphoma. And as we all can see that the differences are very subtle. Uh, both are small cell lymphomas. And if we look at their membranes, they are there is the difference. Uh, the membranes, the nuclear membranes in CLL, SLL are uh, very regular. They are uh, they are minimal irregularities, while in that of mental cell lymphoma, the membrane irregularities become quite prominent. And then finally, they are very, very irregular if we look at the cells from follicular lymphoma. So that's how it goes. These are mature B-cell lymphomas and CLL, SLL resembles a mature lymphocyte maximum in its membrane regularity. Uh, next thing that we can see is the uh, coarse clumped chromatin and the chromatin of CLL is specifically called soccer ball chromatin. Then there are other differences that are seen. There are proliferation centers in CLL, SLL that are composed of pro-lymphocytes and para-immunoblasts, while these are not seen in mental cell lymphomas. On the other hand, we can see scattered histiocytes in mental cell lymphoma and hyalinized vessels that are not a feature seen in SLA. So these things are going to help us uh, in hematoxin and eosin slides to differentiate between the two. However, it's very important to have IHC to differentiate them both from one another. And then we are going to look at it soon. Uh, not to forget that CLL can also be very aggressive, though it's an indolent neoplasm, considered a very indolent one, but it can be aggressive, especially if the proliferation centers are large. And secondly, it can also undergo Richter transformation, that is the transformation of SLL to large B-cell lymphoma. So is with mental cell lymphoma, it has a few variants and two of them are very aggressive variants. One of them is blastoid that has quite a lot of mitosis, 20 to 30 per 10 hyperfield. And another one is the pleomorphic variant in which the cells are large pleomorphic with prominent nucleoli and they appear very much like large B cell lymphomas. Other variants of mental cell lymphoma are CLL-like and marginal-like but uh, we can easily differentiate them if we are using IHC. So IHC, IHC matters. Uh, let's start. The first IHC stain that we that is going to help us is CD20, and it will be positive in malignant cells. And when we are discussing lymphomas and lymph nodes, it is very important to know that where are we supposed to look at the IHC. So CD20 is positive in malignant cells, and this is followed by a CD5 stain. And if we see CD5, it will also be positive in malignant cells. Here is a word of caution because CD5 is actually a T-cell marker, and its positivity in B-cell population is aberrant. And this positivity of CD5 in a B-cell population hints whether it's a, towards it's a CLL or a mental cell lymphoma. So another stain that we are going to use with this is CD23. And this CD23 is going to help us a lot in differentiating between the two. If CD23 is positive, then we will favor CLL, SLL, small lymphocytic lymphoma. And if it comes out negative, then we are uh, uh, more inclined towards mental cell lymphoma. 
After this, after determining what is our diagnosis based on this, before we are going to, uh, to perform any molecular uh, testing on it, we are going to perform a few uh, more IHC markers, like we are going to perform cyclin D1. Now, cyclin D1 can be tricky because it is positive in both. But again, like I said, uh, we have to uh, look very carefully what are the which are the places where we are going to look for. So in CLL, SLL, cyclin D1 is positive in proliferation centers only. It is seen only in proliferation centers while in mental cell lymphoma because of the translocation 1114 that upregulates cyclin D1 we are going to see cyclin D1 positivity cell to cell. All of the cells that are mental cell lymphoma cells, they are positive for cyclin D1. Next that we are going to evaluate is CHI-67. Some uh, use uh, CHI-67 stain very initially in the flow chart, so they can differentiate whether it's a high-grade lymphoma or a low-grade lymphoma. But for a matter of discussion, I am using it uh, at the end. Uh, if we evaluate CHI-67 and if it's more than 40% in SLL, it is considered aggressive uh, CLL slash SLL. And if CHI-67 is more than 30%, then it's considered the uh, blastoid variant of mental cell lymphoma. Other AIDS markers that are going to help us in, in CLL, SLL is LEAF-1, LEF-1. It is positive in CLL, SLL. And then there are a few prognostic markers that we are going to discuss when we discuss prognosis that are ZAP70, MOM1, CD38, CD49D. On the other hand, if you look at mental cell lymphoma, they are not just positive for cyclin B1, but also SOX11 and CD43. But not to forget, there are a few cases that are cyclin B1 negative, but SOX11 is still positive. Okay, so now uh, we are going to talk about a few high yield points for CLL, SLL. Uh, uh, it's an indolent lymphoma of old, though there are a few factors that can make it aggressive that we will be discussing. But if, it, if there's an old patient, even at non-nodal sites, we see monotonous lymphocytic infiltrate, we must think of and we must rule out SLL. Uh, before giving it uh, just a chronic inflammatory infiltrate. Like if a patient, uh, if a 60-year-old male, he's coming with clinically enlarged prostate and, and on TURP, we see lots of uh, chronic inflammatory cells. So we must rule out SLL before we are just signing it out as a chronic lymphocytic infiltrate because the age is old and the site can also harbor SLL. Uh, next important point is IGH sequencing is mandatory before treatment because tailor-made treatment can be given to CLL patients and IGH, if unmutated, has a very dismal prognosis. So the other points that affect prognosis are the prognosis will be poor if ZAP70 expression is, uh, it is, more than, uh, it is seen in more than 20% of cells. If CD38 is, posit is positive, MUM1 is positive, CD49D is positive in more than 30% of the cells. And then is a large proliferation center, CHI67, if it's more than 40%, then these are poor prognostic factors. Other factors are unmutated IgH, and finally, Richter transformation, that is transformation of CLL to large cell lymphoma. Now, looking at the high yield points for mental cell lymphoma, it is again, it can be indolent and or aggressive lymphoma and also seen in old age. However, the point is that SOX11 negative and non-nodal uh, site is an indolent mental cell lymphoma. Uh, the important translocation is 1114. Prognostic factors are if it's blastoid or pleomorphic variant, MIC TP53 and CDK N2 mutations, CHI67 more than 30% or a high mitotic rate that is more than 50 per millimeter square. Uh, that's uh, we uh, now here we end our discussion uh, for CLL and mental cell lymphoma. The recommended reading materials are Rosai and Ackerman, uh, Surgical Pathology, Robin's Cotton Pathologic Basis of Diseases. A uh, very useful website, Pathology Outlines, and of course, WHO classification fifth edition for hematolymphoid tumors. Thank you so much for listening. And by the way, this grand building 
uh, is my medical school and my training institute for histopathology. Thank you.